Hello, everyone, and welcome to this PV Tech Tech Tool Product Series webinar with Trina Sola, a key member of the Solar Module Super League. My name is Mark Osborne, Senior News Editor at PV Tech, and your moderator for today. Our guest speaker is Rocky Lee, Product Manager at Trina Solar, who will be introducing the new Vertex series of solar panels that will be initially available in a 550 watt and 600 watt classes for utility scale markets globally. Just before we begin, a quick reminder that you can ask questions throughout the webinar, and we have people from Trina Solar to help answer some of, some of your questions as, we, as they can. But we'll also have time for a short Q&A at the end. Okay, so Rocky, if you're ready, uh, the floor is now yours. Thank you. Thank you for having me, Mark. Hello, all the audience, friends, partners all over the world. I'm very happy to be here to introduce our exciting Vernex series modules. Today, I will bring 550 watts, 6200 watts, two types of Vernex modules. And for each type, both monofacial and bifacial configurations are available, uh, which can satisfy large utility PV application demand of different environment and scenarios. Before we introduce the modules, Let's first look at the current rapid module power increase trend and the drivers behind this. Uh, as we know, with the PV industry development, uh, PV industry development, we are now in the great parity era. Lower and lower LCOE are urgently requested by by the client, and from the formula above, as we know, LCOE is determined by uh, by various factors. While well, BOS plays a critical role. For uh, BOS, it is determined by the module power and module efficiencies. Higher module power and higher module efficiency can lead to lower BOS. And the curve, the curve below, this is the module, module power increase curve, also indicates this point. This curve shows the increase uh, increase of uh, module power over the past decade. Quite a uh, quite an interesting point that is that before 2019, the increase rate is around 10 to 20 watts per year, and uh, the increase mainly lies in the cell efficiency increase. And after 2019, with a large wafer deployment, this rate become much faster. So for each year. 40 years increase or even 50 years, and now 100 years, uh, 100 watts increase for, for each year. And the early this year is specifically in February, China launched our first generation Vernex 500 watts modules. And this product break the 500 watts mass production threshold. And after this product, the other players also launched their 500 watts products. And now we're excited to, to, to introduce our 600 watts product and we lead industrial again to step into the 6.0 era. And uh, based on this, our 550 watts product and 600 products, uh, what's the key features? Uh, let's first look at the 550 watts product. So for this slide, 550 uh, watts ultra high power output with 21% module efficiencies. The key tags and key parameters are listed here. The left side is the key technologies. T t uh, G12 210mm wafers, multi bus bar, non destructive cuttings, and high density interconnections. For these modules, it's five times 11 layout, five pieces more than our first generation 500 watts Vertex. And it's go from uh, one third cut back to half cut technologies. By this design, we can achieve the most remarkable feature of this our new product, low voltage, which, which I will elaborate later. And look at the right side, the module size is larger. Uh, and the module width is around uh, 32.6 kilograms, which, is, which can be handled by two workers easily. And with upgrade wafers, the de uh, the degradations will be will be lower. First year is two percent, while the annual degradations is zero point four five percent. 
For 600 watts, the same technologies and the difference lies in the layout is six times 10 layout, 10 more pieces and with a wider module format. And we uh, and the weight is still within the within control. And let's look at the technologies separately. So the first one is MBB. MBB is short for multi bus bar, and with the with the wafer size become bigger and bigger. MBB technologies is become an essential technology to ensure the current collection effective. For the technology itself, it has shading reduction, light trapping effect and uh, better uniformity of resistance, which can bring better module performance and the reliability to our customer. And for next page is the NDC. NDC is short for non-destructive cutting technologies and comparing to the conventional laser, uh, laser melting plus machinical separation cutting technologies. NDC tech use advanced low temperature cutting technologies the, the surface after cutting, as we can tell from the micro screw pictures here, is smooth comparing to the, to the conventional ones, and which can bring much better machinical performance from the, from the chart here. And the next one is HD interconnection technology. HD is short for high density interconnection technology. When we encapsulate the cell into the modules, we want to utilize the, this specific area as much as possible. So HD technologies reduce or reduce or eliminate the cell spacing to achieve this point. And the trina select the narrow cell gap go from the previous two millimeters to 0.5 millimeters. This technical approach is a balance for both the module efficiency and uh, yield and and the reliability so this is which can benefit our end users and then let's go into the last technology and which is also the most remarkable features of, of our new 550 and 600 vertex modules it's low voltage high stream power feature by these technologies, we can significantly lower the BOS and LCOE, then brings huge benefit to our clients. In order to have a comprehensive understanding of these features, let's start with the concept of stream power. If we regard the cell as the, uh, the basic unit of the, of the modules with cell power increase, we get a better modules. Then for the solar plant, for the PV system, the stream is the basic unit. Uh, why do I say so? Because from both the uh, structural perspective and electrical perspectives, uh, the tracker or fixed tilt, the tracker or fixed tilt is designed, uh, is designed uh, to support, support the strings. And the cable and the inverters, these uh, electrical components, are designed to connect the strings. If we have a higher stream powers, uh, imagine that for a specific scale PV, PV plant, we have less stream quantities. Then from the stru structural connections and electrical connections, we can all gain the savings. That's the logic of why single stream power is the core factor that determines the cost of BUS system. Uh, then how to improve the stream power? From the formula on the right side, quite easy to understand. PS is stream, uh, single stream power equals PM, which is a uh, single module powers times M. M is the, uh, is the module quantities per strings, uh, which determined by the system voltage and the, and the, 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 the the open circuit voltage calibrated by the temperature coefficient. So actually there is four way to increase the stream powers, including two improvements and two reductions. And uh, uh, previously all the players are aiming at the module power uh, increase to uh, increase the stream powers and do not pay high attention to the to the voltage. 
So this time, our new vertex modules with low voltage uh, uh, design can significantly increase the stream powers. Uh, let's look at a look at a specific comparison, comparing to other typical uh, 540 watts reference modules. The characteristic comparisons is shown in these tables. Besides the power difference, we are 10 watts higher. Uh, we uh, one one obvious point is that we almost have 12 volts voltage lowers. Uh, this can bring extra nine pieces uh, module connections on the string on one strings. Then for single string, for single string, we do the comparison here. We have 35.8 percent more string power. Then how much can these numbers convert into the BUS and LCOE savings? So we we done the analysis. So this is a stimulated PV plant in China and the project size is 100 megawatts with, uh, with central, centralized inverters and the fixed tailed three row transverse installation modes. Comparing to the reference modules, the, the five, uh, five, 550 modules, we can connect 36 pieces per string, while for the reference module, can only connect 20, 26 pieces per string. Then, uh, then, then in the overall calculations, we will have almost 1,000 uh, racking units savings. And uh, per megawatt, the pile, pile numbers, the racking steel, uh, the racking steel cable length, we all have uh, advantages uh, than, than the reference modules. And we do the calculations uh, and the calculated result as shown in the as shown in this slide. As we can tell for different uh, for different components, the savings are listed here. And in the in the overall comparisons for the BUS, we have five cent RMB savings than the reference modules. And the LCOE, we have 2% uh, LCOE savings. Another model the plant comparison stimulated by third-party DMV GL is in uh, US Texas. The, 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 the model PV plant size is 100, uh, 100 megawatts and is string inverter with the 1P tracker design. And in this kind of calculations, uh, for BUS, we have 6.49% uh, savings, and for LCOE, we have 3.78% uh, uh, lower than, than the reference modules. Okay, that's all for the advantage of low, uh, of low vo uh, voltage. At the same time, uh, with the low voltage, which means if we still still want to keep the high power output, the current will be higher at the same time. Whether, whether this will have the compatibility issues, we have deeply communications uh, and uh, deeply collaborations with the downstream partners regarding the compatibilities. For different kind of uh, for different parts for different scenarios, uh, let's look at uh, the compatibility uh, separately. First, let's first look at the central inverters. For central inverters, it's quite simple. We only need to improve the fuse from 15 amps to 30 amps. Then there won't, there won't be uh, any compatibility issue. And for next page is the string inverters. For string inverter, the typical design is 26 amps for two inputs. And current 18, uh, our current uh, the new VRDS modules 18 amps is too high. But with our deep um, cooperation with the mainstream, uh, mainstream string, uh, string inverter supplier, uh, Huawei Sungro, uh, they all recognize these product values and they will develop their 20 amps string inverters. And their new product will be ready in next year's quarter one. And for some, uh, and for SMA, people already have the big current string inverter product, which is suitable for our new modules. After the inverters, let's uh, look at the tracker compatibility. 
Uh, first, for the fixed tilt, for full flexibility with no compatibility issues, and for trackers, due to their current length limitations, 30 pieces modules, uh, 30 pieces modules uh, can be supported at the current stage. But the the, op um, the optimizations is on the way, uh, which will be ready at the end of this year or next year's quarter one. These main uh, tracker suppliers will have their 36 pieces per string solutions by that time. So there's no need to worry. Finally, let's look at the vertex capacities. For vertex series capacities, by 2020, 10 gigawatts, next year, 21 gigawatts, 2022, 31 gigawatts. And 550 watts, 650 watts, 600 watts, a uh, product share the capacity, uh, which, uh, which is um, basically uh, based on your needs. And uh, from the pro product mass production perspective, 550 watts will start the mass production in this year's quarter four, while 600 watts will start the mass productions from next year's first half. And uh, welcome to uh, reach out if you have any questions and uh, welcome to purchase and deploy the exciting Vertex series modules on your PV plan. That's all for my today's introduction. Thanks for watching. Uh, thank you very much there, Rocky, uh, for this presentation. Uh, we're now ready for the Q&A session, but just before then, uh, just a, a point to, to make uh, is that although after the Q&A, the screen goes blank, uh, the platform will still remain live. So uh, you've got time for more questions to be answered by the uh, Trina Solar team, or you can even, if you've not had chance to raise a question, uh, there is time after this session to uh, still remain online and uh, people can help you out. So uh, Rocky, um, if you uh, come back on board, uh, just wanted to start with the first question. Uh, there's a lot here to go through, but uh, the first question is on the different layouts uh, between the 550 watt and the 600 watt uh, panel. So could you just explain in a little bit more sort of detail why these, because they're obviously both vertex uh, series modules, why these have different cell layouts? How, how is this, you know, and also, you know, what is the impact of this or what's the reasoning behind uh, the differences here. I think that's a, a good one to start with. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Mark. This, uh, this is a very good question. For these two new products layout, the 550 watts is five times 11, 55 pieces. And for the 600 is six times 10, 60 pieces, um, cell quantities per modules. And for these two layout, Actually, for uh, you can also combine uh, com combine this with the with the module mass production time. So actually, for the five fifty modules, uh, the 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 mass production time is this year's quarter four four, and uh, so which means from the whole supply chain, uh. All the all the raw materials are ready for for this uh, 550 watt watts modules, including the uh, including the glass and all the encapsulation, all the seals, all the seal materials, uh, and the, for the 1600 watts product, actually, uh, as what I've just introduced, we add one extra columns, and which means the modules will become wider on the uh, on the width, so. So, so this kind of new design need new uh, raw material, more raw, raw material capacity, especially for the glass. So, uh, actually, the glass suppliers is expanding their and is expanding and and building up their new uh, glass capacities. So, so which means and 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 by by the early stage of next years, they will expand and have uh, enough capacities. Uh, to for for us to manufacture the six hundred watts modules, so that's the main reason uh, we pro, uh, we provide two solutions and uh, and two two module types uh, to the market. Okay, uh, thank you for that. Um, <clears throat> I guess I guess slightly related here because uh, people are commenting on uh, 
uh, wanting to figure out the compatibility of the new vertex to the to Trina's recently launched Trina Pro Mega, you know, turnkey PV power plant solution. So I guess the questions are, um, you know, are the, is the new design for the for the Trina Pro Mega, which had a lot of updates to the actual uh, tracker system, are these you know specifically related to the Vertex series uh, and and the ability to have thirty six modules, you know, on a you know in a string? If if do you know you know uh, is this already compatible? Is basically some of the questions here. Oh uh, yeah, for the uh, Trina Trina Pro Trina Pro Mega. Actually, they're they're current they're currently uh, compatible with our first generation Vertex modules, and also our new 550 and 600 watts modules. Uh, they will be compatible uh, with um, uh, with our Vertex modules, and uh, uh, and uh, currently uh, they need some optimization and uh, we need some upgrade to 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 support uh, 36 or 35 pieces. Uh, on, on the Trina Pro Mega. But uh, currently, if you have urgent project, the Trina Pro Mega, I think uh, it can support 30 pieces uh, per stream. But uh, as what I mentioned, uh, the, the 40 connection uh, solutions will be ready uh, at, uh, at the end of this year, like the like, like, like other tracker supplier, because our new, uh, this new Vertex modules is quite, uh, quite quite new and especially for the tracker for the string uh, string connect part we need more uh more longer length uh, to support the modules okay uh understood um moving back to uh, a bit of the earlier technology uh, especially uh, on the non-destructive uh, wafer cutting side uh, this is quite uh, different to what other people are doing. So uh, a few questions on this, but I guess uh, if you could sum up, what, what is the, the key benefit of using this uh, non-destructive cutting process? What, what does that give the downstream as a benefit? Uh, that's a very good question. Uh, actually, uh, as you can tell, the conventional uh, cutting technologies uh, by laser melting and the machinical separations uh, we can tell from the micro uh, micro screw pictures on the sections. Uh, there is uh, the the surface pretty rough, and if the surface is rough, there are at least two two points. The first one is the uh, is the power loss because we have a full seal. We cut it, and the surface is rough. Then we will lose some uh, lose some efficiencies on on this surface. Uh, because uh, there is some defects that can um, uh, can waste the uh, waste the carriers and uh, and uh, lose the the, the seal efficiency. And on the other hand, uh, the rough surface will have some micro crack. Uh, the under the um, under the under the pressure conditions, it we it may uh, have some reliability uh, issue. So. So, um, um, and for actually uh, for the non-destructive cutting technologies, uh, these two points are all get optimized because uh, uh, with the low temperature advanced uh, cutting tech, the surface is very smooth. Then uh, the the power power loss after cutting and the reliability after cutting were all improved. Then go down to the end users, we will have a better uh, better performance and better reliability modules. Okay, um, I've I've understood that. Perhaps just to clarify, <clears throat> you're talking about really you're not disrupting the silicon side. You know, so the rear side, uh, you're not creating fragments. You're actually keeping the temperature, uh, although it's it's heated up, it's it's keeping it within a certain type of temperature range, which is giving the stability. I'm, I'm assuming that, but uh, is that the kind of thing that you're doing there? Yeah, yeah, yeah. This, uh, yeah, that's also the point that uh, the low temperature will further protect the, the the whole materials when when do the cutting process. Okay, excellent. Uh, 
we get uh, we'll move on now thank thank you for for uh, clarifying that rocky that uh, we always seem to get this type of question. Uh, it's regarding bifacial modules within a series. Uh, and basically, uh, let's start off with, uh, you know, to be, uh, to clarify, is the company uh, specifically focusing on glass glass versions for both the 550 and the 600? Or are you actually going to be supplying? Uh, uh, you know, glass and transparent back sheet versions as well. Yeah, uh, that's a very good question. Actually, uh, for the bifacial modules, there are two main technical roads. One is glass glass and the other is glass transparent. And Trinus will focus our vertex modules uh, on glass glass structures. Because uh, according to our uh, research and this, according to our studies that for glass glass modules, it has much better reliability comparing to the glass back sheet because the backside glass has better uh, waterproof abilities. So if the water and uh, so for the back sheet, but for the back sheet materials, uh, the, the water can go through the back sheet and it will cause some um, uh, ca cause some uh, degradations to be uh, more degradations uh, when, when the water go inside go inside the modules. So for the dual glass structures, the these issues will, uh, we will, uh, uh, there will be uh, no such kind of issues. And on the other hand, uh, the glass and glass uh, structures uh, will has better machine core uh, load performance, especially considering considering the module size is become bigger and bigger. The, the double glass structures is um, is a uh, uh, sy uh, sy symmetrical structures. It's like a sandwich uh, that we uh, encapsulate the seal in the middle, and it, there will be a neutral a neutral um, stress layer, which can pre uh, pre uh, protect the seals very well, especially under the the, the module vibrations or module um, module deflections. So the uh, there will be a better machine core uh, load performance. So that's the re uh, reason why China um, focus on the dual glass structures, and we will uh, keep optimize and keep um, upgrade on the dual glass structures for our bifacial module. Okay, Rocky, that's uh, uh, thank you for answering that question. Uh, looking at the time, I think we're we're at the end. So, uh, Rocky, once again, thank you so much for this presentation. Uh, there's still lots of questions there, I can see. So, uh, hopefully, people can uh, get their questions uh, answered today. And uh, well, thank you all for attending uh, this uh, PV Tech Talk Product Series webinar. And we'll see you next time. Thank you very much, and goodbye. Thank you. Thank you. Bye.